Hi, I'm Amy Bodkin, Special Needs Consultant at a Charlotte Mason Plenary. As a school psychologist, autistic adult, and special needs mom, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is how to handle challenging behavior. Join me today as we continue our series on behavior and bridging the communication gap. If you walked into any bookstore in the United States in the late 1980s or early 1990s and went to the popular psychology section, you probably would have seen a book called His Needs, Her Needs by Dr. Harley. In his book, he popularized some research that had come from Dr. John Gottman. He was a psychologist who studied marriage relationships, and one of the things that Dr. Gottman found was that people need positive interactions in their relationships, and they need more positive interactions than they need negative interactions. Dr. Harley, in his book, His Needs, Her Needs, popularized this idea with his example of a love bank and how um, if you withdraw too much from that love bank or don't have enough deposits, then you're going to go into the red and you'll start to experience problems with your relationships. Uh, we have found the same thing in research over time um, with all sorts of different marriage relationships as well as in research with children too. And most of the research says that between, it falls within a ratio of about seven or four positives to one negative. So for every one negative you get, you're going to need four to seven positives. But what does all of this have to do with our children and their behavior? We're talking about marriage research. How does that relate to our children? Well, if we see children as born persons, then a lot of what we learn about how to build positive relationships with other people also relates to our children. So I've got a little acronym for you guys to give you a little tip on how you can start to build a more solid foundation with your kids by making sure that their love banks are full. Uh, I don't know about you, but I can look back over a day and be surprised at how many negatives I may have given my children, how many times I may have asked them to do something, how many times I may have corrected them and told them they weren't doing it correctly, uh, versus how many times I have stopped to give them a hug or to say, hey, you did a really good job with that, or, oh, what are you interested in? I want to hear more about this. Um, so we need to make sure we're building a really solid foundation, especially any of our kids who have gotten negatives in other places, whether they're at school and they're getting a lot of negatives, or uh, maybe it's a foster or adoptive child who's got a pretty big negative buildup and we need a lot more positives. Or maybe it's just a special needs child who sometimes feels like um, he or she is so different from everybody else and that creates a bit of a negative amount in their bank account. So the little trick I have, it's called DRIP. Describe, reflect, imitate, and praise. Um, so when I want to make sure that I spend focused time with my kids uh, depositing into their love banks, I might sit down with them. Um, coloring is definitely was a favorite of theirs when they were smaller. Um, so I've talked to Jessica, my daughter, and she is going to help me demonstrate how I would usually do this. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what all these different things mean. To describe means to just describe what the child is doing. And to reflect means if the child says, I'm drawing an ocean, then you might say, yes, you're drawing an ocean. So you're just reflecting back what they're saying. Um, to imitate, maybe they're drawing an ocean, so you decide to draw an ocean. Um, and then to praise is just to say, wow, I really like that. That's really pretty or very creative. Um, we do not want to ask them questions because that sometimes can put pressure on kids. We also do not want to discipline or correct them unless it's a danger to them at that point because 
If we're disciplining and correcting them in that moment, then that ceases to be a positive. Not that we don't correct them when something goes wrong, but in this moment, we're trying to put more positives in. Um, so unless they are being a danger to themselves or someone else, we try to ignore negative behavior. Um, and then we also want to make sure that we are not criticizing anything that they're doing. Um, like, oh, well, maybe you should make this ocean different, or maybe, you know, maybe a purple ocean isn't very realistic. So we don't want to say any of those kinds of things. And we also don't want to be telling them what to do either, because that puts pressure on kids as well. And we want to try and keep the pressure as low as possible so that we're able to make some positive deposits into their love banks. Jessica has agreed to help me show y'all what it would look like when you use Hello. drip in Hello. your house. Hello. So Jessica is drawing a lovely picture. She's used blue and gray. She's adding some green now. It looks very creative. Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, and we've got we've got a gray curl going there. It's a horn shape. Yeah, a curling horn. You're drawing a horn, huh? Yeah, there's some horns. It's with some gray and some blue. Yeah, I just add that so that then you could see what the two horns. Very lovely. Uh -huh. You know, I think I think I'm gonna make a picture too. And mine's gonna have a horn like yours. Only I don't think I can draw horns quite like you. I guess I'll have to make mine slightly different. I'm going to use blue. You used blue. I've just got a different color blue. Yeah. Yeah. I love all the detail you're putting in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You like to draw a lot. Yeah. I do I think I got the legs a little and the back a little bit too big? I don't think it looks good. I don't you know. You added back legs. Yeah. They're muscular legs. Guess. Mm. I'm drawing an animal with a horn too. Cool. But mine didn't turn out like yours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're drawing another kind of animal, so it's going to end up like that. Right? Well, my horns didn't turn out quite so like yours, so I had to change it up a little. Yeah. Can borrow the gray? Yeah. Thanks. I like the blue tail and the green eye. I used the blue to be able to like make it so that they didn't look so big. <sighs> Very good idea. That was a good little trick. Yeah. I might have to try that sometime. So as you can see, I have described what she's doing. I have imitated her by trying to do my own drawing and I have reflected things she said. She's told me that she's using blue and I'm like, oh yes, you are using blue. Um, and I've also told her what a good job she's doing, so that's praise. So drip, describe, reflect, imitate, and praise. And you'll notice I didn't ask her any questions. I didn't give her any instructions. Um, I didn't correct her and I didn't criticize her. So, um, in some ways, it's kind of like parallel play. 
you can also interact some more if the kid wants to, but sometimes they just want to sit there and have your presence and your company. Join us for the next episode in this series where we'll be talking about some more easy, practical things you can do to set yourself up for success. Also, make sure to head over to the Plenary website for a free download of a helpful little tool you can use when trying to fill up your child's love bank. Be sure to subscribe to the Plenary YouTube channel and click the bell so that you get notified about each new video as soon as it comes out. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to hearing about how this tool works in your home.